Hello, this is Jason Kendall, and welcome to the next of my introductory astronomy lectures. Last time we were looking at the nature of how stars change with time and how they look in terms of their HR diagrams. And we saw that stars actually, uh, obe star clusters had turnoff points and so forth. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look individually at stars and how we look, see how stars live and uh, how they're born, how they live, and how they die, depending upon their masses, how their masses, and to some extent their composition. So this is a schematic that I grabbed off of Wikipedia by R.N. Bailey, and it's a really good schematic that shows the life cycle of stars from various and sundry points in there. And what we see is we see a star is, no matter what they are, start off as a great big molecular cloud. They get born in really big star clusters. The star clusters then have protostars in them, and the protostars then become either small mass stars, low mass stars, or really massive stars. The immediate look, look, and they evolve according to uh, their masses, and the fa bigger they are, the faster they evolve. Uh, stars like the sun become red giants and turn to planetary nebulae, and eventually white dwarfs, and those cool off over tens of trillions or hundreds of trillions of years. If they have a companion next to them, they might become a nova, or it might become a supernova. But if they're much more massive than the sun, then they will explode as a nova, leaving behind a supernova remnant, and one of two things. They either might leave behind a neutron star, which, which we see as a pulsar, or they might leave behind a black hole, which we might see with X-ray emission. There are also some, there's some details to this that are glazed over, but basically every star is born, it, li it lives a life on the main sequence, as it's dying it does some very odd things, and it's every star's act actual death involves repopulating, or most of the stars involve, uh, well not most of the stars, the most dramatic stars uh, and rarest stars empty their contents out into the cosmos for the cosmos to use again in other stars. So really what is happening on the right-hand side of the screen actually leaks over to the left. All right, so why do we think this? Because individual stars have tracks with time with over on an HR diagram. So we will call these evolution tracks on the HR diagram. And of course it's the same thing where you have cool stars in the lower right and hot stars in the upper left for all four of these little diagrams. And so we can look at uh, the luminosity goes low on the, on the bottom and up and very high on the left. And so we have a, a characteristic main sequence. So if we start with A, B, C, D, uh, we have here, we find that they become what are called black globules. They contract to form protostars. Then they become main sequence stars. When they die and leave the main sequence, a star like the sun will, have, will grow to be a red giant, experience a helium flash, become unstable, eject its, eject its outer, core, outer layers to become a planetary nebula, and eventually the core of the star cools off as a white dwarf. And this is what we call an evolutionary track. And every star follows a, an evolutionary track over its lifespan. And the sum of all the stars in their current places in their evolutionary track makes up an HR diagram for a cluster. And so these models and these tracks are computer models, because we've never seen and will never see an individual star do this. We're just taking snapshots and knowing the physics of them. So what we're going to do in the future lectures is describe the various states of these of various stars as we know them through computer modeling uh, and how the computer models fit the observations. So once again, we're going to be going through all the stellar life cycles from birth to death to uh, really weird things, their stellar corpses and their remnants. So we'll start off with the birth of stars in interstellar clouds, and we'll see you next time.